Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to Survive Russia. This is not a commercial, this is a video on the best bushcraft, survival, outdoors, homesteading, all around small chainsaw. And this video I'm making for Wild Siberia, Danny out in uh, Baikal. He's my buddy, he's a fellow Serber. I think uh, us Serbers uh, worldwide have a special uh, bond and community. Danny is a buddy, Danny is a brother, so uh, I'm gonna make a video for him because he's gonna receive one of these here very very shortly. So uh, without too much uh, blah blah blahing, then I just want to dig into what I'm carrying with me, how it works, what to look out for. As I said, special video for Danny out in Wild Siberia and while we're at it, Please subscribe and like the video and all that good stuff. And since uh, all of us here in Russia have been uh, demonetized recently, then the channel is uh, running solely on uh, voluntary donations. There's links in the description to that. Boosty <coughs> and uh, subscribe star, that's the options we have. So I of course appreciate it if you want to check that out and uh, help the channel. The body of mine, which is uh, visiting at the moment, have been using this uh, chainsaw today, you can see. This is not really awesome, but in this bag here, I basically have what I think that uh, Danny would need and Danny would definitely need some stuff. So this is basically what I carry in my bag for my chainsaw, some WD-40, it can be anything really. This guy here, this guy here and the, and the guide for the chainsaw, for, for sharpening the chainsaw is useful if you're not a professional logger and just do it uh, without any problems. The day chainsaw should come with an extra pair of uh, bolts for, for the chain bar. This guy here, I'll show you what it is. I carry some extra oil just in case. I always carry gasoline and oil, of course. You get the, this little uh, thingy here, screwdriver for adjusting the throttle and so on. It's just an extra filter, gasoline filter and so on. I carry two extra chains. One fresh chain, ordinary chain, then I carry another chain for, uh, it's a ripping chain. That means that you're not crossing, cutting across the grain, but you're cutting along the grain. That can actually come in pretty handy. Something that we definitely want to carry extras of is air filters. Buy five, ten pieces straight away. You of course need a chainsaw file, a flat and a round one. This is a flat one. The flat one, I'll show you in a second what that is for. It's actually pretty important, especially if you, uh, especially if you sharpen your chain a lot. And I'll show a little bit of the tricks to, to sharpen the chain. I'm not an expert uh, uh, logger, chainsaw user, but uh, I can definitely uh, advise. We can see we have too much lag in the chain. That is not good. We of course open the, release the here. And here, and this key here, you notice that the, that the chain bar dropped down a little bit. I'll get into that. But anyway, we'll adjust the chain a little bit. So while we are at it here, when you want to sharpen your chain, right? Make the tension a little bit harder than you normally would. And just close the front here. A little bit. Then with your round file here, you can uh, adjust, you can uh, sharpen the chain. Of course, you will uh, notice that you have to to do it at a special angle. There's actually guides on the chain uh, on the cheese uh, here themselves. So if you don't want to use the guide, you can use the cheese. But anyway, what you want to do is that you don't want to press down too much. You actually want to lift up a little bit. This is not optimal. And then take like four or ten strokes on these tooth. And you'll do that on the other side as well. And these chains here, you of course don't you don't wanna sharpen the, the, them them what you can say you wanna sharpen them equally. Otherwise it'll it'll start to cut the on an angle left or right. That is not so awesome. But it's pretty easy to figure out where you have to do it because here on the chain you have two teeth which stands one, two, the same way. Like from this side you have to sharpen it, what, what. And then you can just start here and work yourself around, right? 
if you char sharpen your chain a few times, you have this uh, guide here, which uh, can show you if you need to uh, if you need to uh, file down these shark fins here, as I call them. They most likely call something else, but uh, it's not needed uh, straight away. But this is what uh, controls how much you're taking off, how big the chips are going to be. So if you're filing your teeth down and it starts to cut bad, that's because you haven't filed these guys down correctly or accordingly. So these are actually pretty uh, important. So you need a round file for the special size of chain. You need a flat file as well. And then this guide here comes in very handy for a lot of stuff actually. But the video is not really about that. Now we have some slack again, right? So when you want to adjust your chain, after uh, filing it, you want to just, that, that's kind of an individual thing. It just doesn't, doesn't have to be too tight. But what's very important is that you lift up in the blade here, in the chain bar. Because if you don't do that, it will get, uh, it will get loose pretty fast. So you lift up in it while you're tightening down these two bolts here. And that's why, where, not so why, that's where this guy here comes in. You need a good vise, or you need this guy here, this guy you can just smack down on a, on a log or something like this. So this is kind of like a field vise. So we sit something like this, attached to a log, then it's much, much easier to sharpen and uh, work with. If you don't use this field device here, then you have a vise at home or something like this, and you just clamp it down here with a paper with a bit of a cloth. When I sharpen my chain, I normally turn around the blade because, uh, oh, the blade, the chain bar, <laughs> because we have a sprocket out here, and it's uh, good to get some uh, even uh, wear and tear on the chain bar. So turn it around now and then. You can see the chain bar actually flips up and down, right? So lift it up, tension the chain, and then I just tighten down the, the front one, and after that the rear one. So in here we have the lubricating mechanism. There are some small holes, you can see there's a small hole there, so when you turn the blade upside down, this hole will fit up there. It's a good thing to clean out these holes here once in a while so they don't get stuck, because that's what lubricates the chain and the chain bar and here we have the adjustment screw I forgot to show my extra spark plug and uh, that's basically what I carry the, the most important things is the, the files, air filters, spark plugs spare uh, uh, nuts for the, the chain bar and so on and then you can just add whatever you want it's a great saw as I said for the outdoors, for survival, for uh, bushcraft, outdoors. And uh, I, I say this because I had a very, very unhappy viewer saying that when he saw my video from uh, fishing and camping and so on. He was like, uh, when I saw the chainsaw, I turned off because it cannot possibly be bushcraft and outdoor stuff and so on when you're using a chainsaw, right? I mean, why, why would I want to waste time when I'm in a vehicle and I have a chainsaw? Why do I want to waste time standing with a handsaw and, and sawing uh, firewood? I mean, if uh, people like to, uh, you know, to like uh, reenact and uh, do things like they did in the 18th century and so on and the uh, 19th century, that's fine. Of course, I made a lot of stuff with it. I made an awesome shelter with this chainsaw here, which stands to this day. I have not been there for a year, most likely, because I hadn't had the time. Steel MS-80 for around the homestead, as I said, for the forest and so on. It's awesome. So until next time, get out and train, get it done, do something awesome, do something nice, and uh, check the links in the description and consider supporting the channel and all the good stuff, blah, blah, blah. See you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much for your time.